Hi, this is Dr. Frederick. I had a question about how to do the chef face test um, in an ANOVA with really a limited amount of information. And, and so here's the problem as it was presented to you. Um, now, you know, I didn't put in what the, uh, what the, um, the actual F table was. So let me just grab that real quick. Okay, so there's the actual F table. <clears throat> so we have uh, three groups here, A, B, and C. A is no sleep apnea, B is untreated, and, and C is treated sleep apnea. And here are the sample means uh, for our groups on some sort of uh, score. Um, we don't, it doesn't really matter what the score is, but what we need to know is that there are 11 children in each group. Okay, That's the important piece of information for this table. And then we have a sums of square or sum of squares uh, for each of these groups. Now we have our main ANOVA table that answers the question of whether you know there is some uh, significant uh, difference between these groups in terms of the sample means. Now the critical F ratio, the critical F value is given to you as 5.39 at alpha equals 0.01, meaning that one percent of the time uh, the F ratio is going to be 5.39 or higher. When, when there is no difference between the groups. Now, our, our F value is 7.02, uh, clearly larger than that F value, and so we conclude uh, that there is a difference between the groups. And so now we're going to say, what are the differences? And we're going to do a very conservative test called Chefe to tell us. Now, it's, it's not real obvious if you look at the book how to do this, but I got this straight out of the book, and here's how we're going to do this. First of all, we need to know that there's 11 in each group. And so if the sample mean is 0.6, that means the total, the sum of the scores for the groups uh, for no sleep apnea was 11 times 0.6 or 6.6. .6. That is, if we add up all the scores for no sleep apnea, that total is 6.6. .6. And um, let me just make this a little bigger for you. Okay. When we add them all up and, and get 6.6, .6, if we divide by 11, we get the sample mean of, of 0.6. So this is the missing piece of information that they want you to try to figure out in the APLIA problem. Here the mean is 0.45. There are 11 people in that group, 11 children. And 11 times 0.45 gives us the total. This T, you know, this T is for total. The total of the B scores is 4.95, so forth. Now let's just look at the sums of squares between A and B. Okay, so the way you do that is uh, if the total here is 6.6, .6, we square that and divide by the number in the group. Then we add that to the um, to the next value, 4.95 squared divided by 11 in the group. Now add these two values together, 6.6 .6 and 4.95 to get 11.55. Square that and divide by the total of these two groups, 22. And then you're going to get this value as the sums of square or the sum of squares between A and B. Now, if you want to do uh, A and C, then you know you're just going to put in the uh, C value here and then the new total here. There's 11 in each group, so it's pretty easy substitution. If you want to do B versus C. Then you put the 4.95 here, the 3.43 here, and then add them up to get whatever that total is going to be instead of 11.55. So once you figure out, you know, the, the, the whole idea here is that they're going to trick you a little bit by not giving you all the data that are in the book, and they just want you to figure out that if you have 11 children and your sample mean is 0.6, then the total, the T, was 6.6. .6. It's the only book I've ever seen to, to use T for total. Everybody else use, you know, sum or sigma F or something like that. Okay? Sigma X is what I would use. I um, hope that's helpful. It's not. Just let me know.